Hello and welcome to What The Math. Today we're talking about the big one, standard deviation. All right, so this is it. This is the statistical monster. Ready for it? Read the comic, laugh at it. It's actually quite funny. Ha 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 ha. Now you probably don't get it yet. Uh, after you watch the video, come back, rewind the video. No, that's not a proper term for modern technology. Uh, scroll the thing back to the beginning of the video, read this again, see if you get it because it is kind of funny. Now, before we start, let's let's try to analyze the word standard deviation. What does it mean? What is what is standard? Well, standard just means average or normal. Average or normal and deviation means difference. Difference. Now, what does it mean? So, imagine um let's imagine we are shooting uh darts at a target. Now, right here in the middle we have 10 points, here we have 9 points, 8 points and 7 points. One of us shoots the dart and it hits right here it hits right here i'm going to use a different color and this is actually one point away from the center so this is one point away then the person shoots right here uh right here hits an eight and this is actually two points away from the center third person shoots at a seven which is three points away and the fourth person shoots again at, a, at an eight which is two points away now um, if we look at our differences from the center, we'll find that this is what we have. We have a one, we have two twos, and then we have a three. Now this is difference from the center, from in other words, from the mean. Uh, if we add these up and divide by four, which is the number of times we shot the darts, we will find something called variance, which is how varied uh, the all our values are from the center. So in other words, one plus two plus two plus three is eight divided by four or two. So here on average, we are about two units away from 10 from the center. So this is how all of us performed when playing darts. Let's look at a more statistical kind of example. In the previous uh, video, we talked about uh, marathon runners and then we had values like two hours, 30 minutes, two hours, 40 minutes, and I'll just say two hours and 50 minutes. Uh, then we had a kind of an average somewhere in the middle. So some people were really fast, but not so many of them. Then the majority of people were somewhere over here. And then some people were pretty slow and they finished late. Now here we have our median mode and mean right in the middle. And now I just imagine there's a person called, his name is Bob. Bob is right here. And Bob ran at around uh, two hours and 45 minutes. So he was about five minutes away from the mean, from the average. Average was two hours and 40 minutes. Then we have a really fast person whose name is Jane. And Jane was so fast, she finished at 2.35. 2.35 right here. So she was um, five minutes, this is not actually equal, it's supposed to be equal, uh, five minutes away, but on the other side. Then we have another person whose name is uh, Frank and Frank is just a really slow guy. He doesn't really like running. He just joined because Bob was running and he came in like 10 minutes after Bob, uh, five minutes after Bob, but 10 minutes away from the mean. And then we have this one person from like Eastern Africa somewhere who is just ultra fast. He finished at like two hours and 25 minutes. He was there 15 minutes before everyone else. Now here we have our differences from the mean. So we can see that uh, on average, these four people had a difference of 15 plus 5 plus 5 plus 10 divided by 4. So it would be 35 divided by 4, whatever that number is. It's like 8 something, 8.5 maybe. Uh, and that is the average, average uh, variance from the mean for these people. Now, this is not deviation yet, but it's a very similar concept. This is a very similar concept. For standard deviation, however, we're looking at the standard. In other words, let me circle in red. Standard means that we're looking at every single value. We're looking at Bob, Frank, uh, uh, whoever the other guy was, Jane, and we're looking at every single person on this graph. And then we're doing the same thing for each of them, finding every single difference, and then combining them together and finding the average of this difference. And this is what we call standard deviation. Now this value, what it shows us is how spread out the graph is. So for example, if standard deviation is very, very high, this graph might be, might actually look a little bit different. This graph might look something like this. It might look something like that. It will be very, very spread out, very spread out, very fat. However, 
If the standard deviation is very, very low, uh, let me just erase some of this. So if the standard deviation is very, very low, your graph might look something like this, very, uh, very like sort of high. And there's really only the center that's really high and the rest is very, very low. So most people here finished within this type of, this type of time frame. And this is where standard deviation is low. In other words, there's not a lot of variance. Now let's look at the actual formula from the book and try to analyze what it means. And this right here is the formula. You don't actually have to remember it because it will be on your formula booklet, but you do need to understand what's going on here. Now, first, before I start, I'm going to mention that in the book, it's SN or sometimes small s. However, on your calculator, it's represented by Greek letter Sigma, which is kind of like this. I'm going to show this to you later on the calculator, but it's a different letter. So just make sure that you know that this is the same, exactly the same thing. Uh, big S, however, big S refers to variance. It's not the same thing. Um, all right, so let's analyze this. So what does this somewhat scary looking formula mean? Well, first of all, XI refers to each frequency, each individual, each Jane, each Bob, each Frank. So this is just each, each uh, individual value. X bar is our mean. Then we find the difference between them. So we find the difference like we did before. But then what we do is we actually square this difference. Now this is for two reasons. One is to get rid of the negative sign if we have a negative sign because otherwise we're gonna have we get and get in trouble because there's a, a square root coming. And the other thing is that it actually makes your values much more accurate this way. Uh, then we sum them all up. This is a summing of all values. This just means sum all these values together. So if there's a hundred values, you're gonna sum all hundred values. Then divide by total number. In other words find the average of all of these differences that, that were squared before. And now finally, we're going to square root it back so that we can get rid of the uh, square root, uh, sorry, the, the, get rid of the square and at the same time so that we actually get our original units back. So if this was like meters, then this will make it meters squared, but square rooting it will make it meters back again. So this is really what this formula means. It's, it's not that complicated. It's actually relatively easy. And uh, we're going to take a look at a quick example here uh, from the book, just to, so we can see uh, if we understand this. And here's the example 18 from page 199. So there's uh, seven numbers here and you have to calculate standard deviation of this data set. Uh, I'm going to do it the way it's done in the book first, and I'm going to show it to you on the calculator. So first write all of your scores uh, in a table. So I'm going to write them right here. So it's two, five, four, six, seven, five, and six like this. Um, we can actually right away find the mean, uh, because we will need this for later. So the mean here, X bar is red X bar equals to all of these numbers added up divided by seven because our N is seven and mean here is, I believe five mean is five. Um, then what we're going to do in our next table is going to be this right here. So this is going to be X I minus X bar. So this is every value minus the mean. So two minus five, two minus five is what is it? I don't even know. Minus three, five minus five, zero and so on. And that's our values for the first column. Next column, next column is going to be right here. I'm going to use different color. Next column is when we're going to square it. Now we're going to square it. So let's square all these values. So this is X minus, sorry, X I minus X bar. Now it's going to be squared. So this will give us nine, zero, one. And the last bar, oh no, not the last bar, sorry. First we're going to, so next step here is to add them all up. So this is going to be sum, sum of X I minus X bar squared. So essentially we're adding these up nine plus zero plus one will give us 16. This will give us 16. Next, we are going to divide by N. So 16 divided by N, 16 divided by seven. And finally, we're going to square it, square root of 16 divided by seven. And the answer here will be approximately 151, which is our standard deviation for this, uh, for these data. Now, what does this mean? So let me just try to explain it to you by drawing a picture right here on top. I'm going to erase this top part. 
All right, so imagine this is our number bar. So there's four here, three here. They're not exactly equal, but that's okay. Uh, we know that the mean is five. So this is our mean right here. I'm going to draw a bar. And what the standard deviation is telling us is that on average, uh, most numbers are within 1.51 um, values from the mean. So 151 is around here and around here. So most values, or sorry, most numbers specifically, 30, 34% of numbers on this side and 34% of numbers on this side are within 1.51 or within this limit right here. So uh, essentially, 68% of all numbers are here. Uh, and this is what standard deviation is telling us. Basically, it's a way to measure how far away from the center something is. Now, if, um, if we draw this, or if we actually try to plot this, it will look kind of like this. It'll actually be something like this. Uh, and this is what usually most of the uh, statistical graphs look like. Now, if your standard deviation is much lower, if it's actually a very low standard deviation, it will probably look a lot uh, more squished in the middle. So it will probably look like this. Whereas if your standard deviation is very, very, very high, uh, sorry, yeah, very high, it will look a lot more spread out, kind of like this. So this is a high standard deviation. And if we do this on the calculator, it's a lot faster. But the thing is, sometimes you're not allowed to use calculator in certain problems, and you may actually have to construct these manually. Some questions, especially type two questions, may ask you to do this manually and not on the calculator. But if they don't say this, you can use the calculator, describe the buttons that you use, and do this really quickly. Let me show you how quick it is. And you can actually try to even count how long it takes me. Basically, here we go. Two, uh, five, four, six, seven, five, and six. And then we go to stat. We go to one variable stat, uh, calculate everything. And standard deviation is right here. This is the letter sigma, 151. This is our answer. Now, you don't really need to know any of the other uh, letters, but basically this here refers to sum of all x's. This is sum of all numbers. Uh, this refers to sum of all numbers squared. Uh, you will need this for university statistics later. And this is variance. This is what we talked about before. This is a variance. So usually in statistics, you want, you want to use this right here. So remember, this is what you need for your test. Now, let me just talk a little bit more about standard deviation and show you some real life examples. So it kind of makes more sense. Now, the most common example um, that we use when talking about um, population standard deviation and, and mean and median mode is IQ distribution. So this is how IQ distribution works uh, for basically everyone in the world. Uh, the average IQ, the mean mode, the median of IQ is 100. So approximately 50% uh, of people have IQ of 100. And here, what we can look at is standard deviation. So standard deviation for IQ test is always, always 15. Standard deviation, so I'm going to draw the sigma letter. That's not how we draw it, but okay. Uh, it is 15. In other words, um, right here, this is your standard deviation. I'm going to just write S. Uh, and this right here is also standard deviation. And this percentage always stays the same. So 34% of people are always one standard deviation higher than the mean. And 34% of people are always lower than the mean. Um, then if you look at the second standard deviation, so this is two standard deviations away, it becomes only 14% of people. And here it's also only 14% of people. So two standard deviations is actually about 48% away from the mean on both sides, on both sides. And then the last part, this right here, the three standard deviations, this is when it gets really interesting. This is actually only 2% of population. So only 2% of population on both sides is uh, three standard deviations away from the mean. Now, in psychology, this is actually a term for this. This is usually called um, disability. So this is people who are uh, mentally disabled. How do you spell disability? I don't know. Uh, and this is uh, what we actually usually refer to as genius. So 2% of population are three standard deviations away from the mean when it comes to IQ. So their IQ is 131 or higher, and they're referred to as genius. So this is actually how you technically define a genius. And I've uh, just recently, I've read somewhere online that apparently Einstein's IQ was approximately 160. So if you look at this graph, he's actually going to be somewhere over here, 160. So essentially, he's not three but four standard deviations away from the mean, or essentially he is in the 
99.9 percentile of population. So he was in like 0.1 top percent of people in terms of intelligence. All right, so this is it for standard deviation. Hopefully this was a little bit more clear because it is a very difficult concept, but it takes a while to kind of wrap it around your head. Um, and now go back to that comic in the beginning and read it, see if you get it. And anyway, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, good luck to you, and bye-bye.